In this video, we will show how to generate a complex, non-manifold assembly with a grid-based method in the Materialized Mimics Innovation Suite as an example of an advanced workflow. We will first create the assembly, then improve the accuracy of the assembly by projecting the surfaces back on the original parts, and finally, create the volume mesh. To do this, we will use a trabecular bone featuring a screw embedded in the bone. Please use the trabecularscrew.mxp file from the demo files for this exercise. First, let's create the non-manifold assembly. Go to the Remesh menu and click on Create Non-Manifold Assembly. Select the trabecular as the main entity and the screw as the intersecting entity. Make sure not to do this the other way around, as it will change the Boolean order between the parts. For the assembly method, we will use a grid base with a grid resolution of 0.05 mm. Set post smoothing to without compensation and uncheck the reduce triangles option. Apply the operation. Now we have our non-manifold assembly. Here you can see that the assembly has a good interface between the screw surface and the trabecular surface. Hide the trabecular surface set and visually compare with the screw portion of the assembly to the original screw part. There is a noticeable difference between the two. So the next thing we need to do is improve the accuracy of the screw portion of the assembly. We can achieve this by using the project mesh operation in the fix menu. We will then project the meshes of the interface and screw surface sets to the original screw part. The result is a noticeably more accurate screw. In some cases, the mesh projecting step might introduce some intersecting triangles. This is less likely to occur if a smaller grid resolution is used when creating the non-manifold assembly. So let's use the fix wizard to check if there are any intersecting triangles. We can uncheck all the other analyses, leaving only the intersecting triangles checked. As you can see, there are two. To identify these triangles more easily, we will use the marking tools to visually isolate them from the rest of the assembly. Start by selecting the assembly and making all the surface sets visible again. Then, go to the Fix menu and select Mark Intersecting Triangles. To expand the marked areas, go to the Mark menu and click on Expand by Number. Select the marked triangles as the entity and set the number of iterations to 3. Click on Apply. Next, invert the marking and hide all the marked triangles to single out the island that contains the intersecting triangles. Mark intersecting triangles again to highlight them. To fix the intersecting triangles, we will use the manual surface mesh tool. To make our task a little easier, you can change the shading mode to filled with triangle edges. This enables us to see the triangles better. Now, use delete triangle to delete the intersecting triangles. Then, use Create Triangle to patch the hole. To ensure that the patching fills the hole perfectly, press F3 to open the filter options. Make sure the Triangle Node option is the only checked filter. Before we continue, go to the Mark menu and click on Make All Visible to make the triangles visible again. 
The next step is to improve the triangulation of the mesh. Previously, the triangles of the trabecular structures, which are located at the interface, were elongated with the projection of the screw. You can see from here that the triangles of the assembly are more irregular at the bed edges compared to the rest of the surface. As the rest of the mesh already has a good quality, we will only remesh the elongated areas. First, we will group the bed contours in a new curve set by expanding the bed contour list of the assembly, selecting all the bed contours and copying them to a new curve. Then, you can separate them into a new curve set. To remesh the area, we select the newly created curve set. Now, we can see that the area of the curve is marked. Next, we expand the marked areas by selecting Expand operation. The next thing we need to do is to remesh the marked areas. Go to the Remesh menu and click on Adaptive Remesh. Make sure that the marked triangles are selected as entities and set the target triangle edge length to 0.04 mm. Uncheck the Preserve Surface Contours option. After remeshing, Right-click the work area to select Unmark All and proceed to delete the curve set from the object tree. Now you will see that the triangles are much more regular and uniform across the bad contours. Next, we will create a volume mesh for the non-manifold assembly. Go to Remesh and click on Create a Volume Mesh. Then, select the non-manifold assembly as the entity. Make sure the element type is TET4 and that the control edge length is unchecked. For the Analyze Mesh Quality part, make sure the aspect ratio has been chosen as the shape measurement and the histogram maximum is 100. You will notice that the logger message indicates that there is one bad volume element. This is located in an area where a few overlapping triangles are present. To locate it, select the Analyze Mesh Quality from the Remesh menu first. Then, select the assembly by clicking Entity. And on the histogram, check the Calculate Histogram option and select Volume as the mesh type. Then, select Aspect Ratio as the shape measurement and 100 as the shape quality threshold. Check the Mark Bed Elements option. Select 3 as the element growth and 10 and 100 for the histogram bin size and maximum limit, respectively. After applying these options, you will see a few triangles have been marked. To visualize the triangles, we need to hide the volume list first. In similar way to the previous step, we need to expand the marked triangles first, perform an invert marking and hide all the irrelevant triangles. To enable the triangles to be marked again, we will use Analyze Mesh Quality with the same parameters. Here, you will see that the triangles are marked again. Now, we can proceed with fixing the problematic area. Often, some neighboring triangles will need to be deleted as well to make sure that the fix is complete. After deleting the triangles, we can proceed with patching the hole.
After that has been done, we can make the assembly visible again and recreate the volume mesh. Select the same parameters and after applying the steps, you will see the bad volume element has been eliminated. Now we can split the non-manifold assembly based on its volume mesh. Select Split Non-Manifold Assembly from the Remesh menu and select Automatic Volume for the Split method. Now the non-manifold assembly is split based on its volume meshes. Oh, no.